Hi everyone. Uh, thank you to all my members for supporting this channel. Since you are members, today I will not only present the case study, but I will also provide my detailed analysis of this scenario, as well as other scenarios uh, that will help you to understand rules of the road and its application in real life at application at sea. So today I take up a case study uh, of a bulk carrier and a container ship that were approaching each other at full sea speed. They were in open waters, so there was no dearth of sea room available. But let me then present what happened initially and then I will provide an analysis of the scenario by answering three key questions that will help you to understand the rules of the road better. So the bulk carrier was steering a course of about 310 degrees true, going northwest at about 15 nautical miles and the container ship was steering southeast at about 130 degrees true at 23.7 nautical miles. At this stage, the closest point of approach or the CPA as determined using the R power radar was about 0.45 nautical miles that is a green to green. So the vessels were passing starboard to starboard or green to green and this is at position number one. At position number two, the vessels were about 4.8 miles away from one another and at this stage the container ship altered 6 degrees to starboard and the bulk carrier altered 5 degrees to port. At position number 3, when the vessels were about 2.5 nautical miles away from one another, the container ship altered 5 degrees to starboard and the bulk carrier altered 10 degrees to port. Finally, when it was too late and just before the collision, the container ship had a major alteration uh, about 18 degrees to starboard and the bulk carrier altered about 50 degrees to port at position number 4. But by then it was too late and the vessels collided. Luckily, there were no casualties but there were major structural damages to the vessel. At this point of time, I will ask you three questions and then provide you the answers of it. The first question is, what were the faults of each ship? The second question is, what should each ship have done? And the third one is, by what percentage was each ship responsible for the collision? So let me take up the first question. What were the faults of each ship? Now, if you uh, remember what I said earlier, these two vessels were in open waters. There was no birth of, or rather no dearth of sea room available to them. The both vessels naturally, because they were in open sea, they were approaching each other at full sea speed. One was going at about 15 miles, 15 knots. The other one was going at about 24 knots. So they were at a relatively a pretty uh, fast approach to each other. Now, both vessels should have realized that uh, in the position number one, the CPA was only 0.45 nautical miles. Now, considering they are in open waters, that itself should have triggered a thought in their minds that I should make a broad alteration and I should have a more CPA available for this vessel. Right. So that was the first mistake. So the first mistake was as soon as position number one, they, the vessel, two vessels uh, realized that the only CPA is only about 0.45 nautical miles. They should have uh, made sure that they made an alteration bold enough to increase that CPA because it's open waters. Uh, we don't have any information about other ships in the vicinity. We are assuming they have enough sea room. So they should have made a broad alteration and position one itself to make sure that the CPA is large enough. It should have been more than one or two nautical miles. Uh, this is 0.45 is acceptable maybe in narrow channels and uh, fairways or traffic separation schemes, but not in open waters. The second mistake that each ship made was small alteration of courses at position number two and three. And even at position number one, position number one, two and three, they made small alteration to courses. So as soon as they realized that they are probably passing very close to each other, they were making small alteration to courses, which are hardly noticeable by the naked eye or even by the radar or the ARPA. They should have made major alterations at stage number one itself. 
a major alteration that they made when it was too late at position number four and they collided. That kind of major alteration should have been made at stage one itself. The third fault that the vessel made was that none of them took action which could have been apparent to the other vessel. None of them really uh, understood the situation. None of them uh, really made sure that they communicated uh, their intentions or uh, either uh, through the VHF or through the action of the vessel which is recommended of course communicating by VHF is not recommended because uh, sometimes there could be confusion because here we are assuming there are only two ships in the vicinity open waters you can communicate but you should have communicated they should have communicated to each other and made sure each of them is aware of the intention of the other if that is was not the case they should have shown their intention by broad alterations the second question I asked you what should each ship have done so in this case if you were on either of the two ships you have to first determine what situation you are in and what rules are applicable to you. Is this a head-on situation? Is this a crossing situation? If it's a head-on situation, what action should you be taking? If it's a crossing situation, are you the giveaway vessel or the stand-on vessel? Once you have determined the situation, in this case, I would say that this was a crossing situation. Somebody else might say it almost seems like at position number one, they are on head-on courses. Now, we don't have any idea of courses. So head-on is described as reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses. So here we don't have any idea. But from the aspect of the two vessels, we can say it was either a crossing situation or a head-on situation. In either case, you should first determine what situation you are in why you are in head-on or why you are in crossing situation. If you are not on reciprocal or nearly reciprocal courses, you are involved in a crossing situation. If you are in a crossing situation, then are you the giveaway vessel? If you are the giveaway vessel, which in this case would have been the container ship, the container ship should have made a broad alteration to starboard, broad enough by maybe 50 degrees, 60 degrees, to make sure that the bulk carrier understands that the container vessel acknowledges its duty as a giveaway vessel and hence is taking early action, early and substantial action to stay well clear of the stand-on vessel. If you were on the bulk carrier and you assumed that, and not assumed, but rather you understood you were on the stand-on vessel, then you should have made the container ship. Intention should be clear. You should tell them that, yes, I will be standing on my course. I will be keeping my course, but you should alter. If you are seeing that they are not taking action, then again, by the same rules, by the rules of crossing situation, if you realize that the stand-on vessel is, the giveaway vessel is not taking action in early time, then you as the stand-on vessel can take action, should take action to keep clear of the giveaway vessel. You should have, in the bulk area, should have altered, made a major alteration to starboard, making sure that the container ship understands that they are altering course. You could have passed stern of the container ship if the container ship would have maintained its course and speed. So these are what they should have done. Now the third question I asked you was what by what percentage what was each ship responsible for the collision? According to me, both ships were equally responsible for the collision. You can't fault one ship over the other ship. Both ships were equally responsible and this shows you that when you are at sea, irrespective of whether you are the stand-on vessel, irrespective of whether you are the vessel being overtaken or it is if it is your duty to keep clear of the vessel, you have to make sure that you communicate your intention and you are aware of the intention of the other vessel at sea. So sometimes giveaway vessel, the officer on the giveaway vessel or the officer on the vessel who is come, uh, overtaking you, uh, who have the responsibility of keeping clear, maybe busy doing some other work. Maybe they are distracted. Maybe they are not keeping an eye. Maybe they have not noticed your vessel, especially if there are other vessels around. Then you have to make sure, even though if you are the stand-on vessel or the vessel being overtaken, then you are communicating to the other vessel of your intention. You can do so by the VHF. You can do so by AIS recognizing them and contacting them. Or you can display your intention with a early and substantial action to make it very clear to the other vessel as to what your intention is. At the end of the day, your objective is to keep your ship safe and not be involved in a collision. So if you have any other points to add to this, please feel free to write it in the comment section. I believe uh, to really analyze this scenario, you must be very familiar with uh, the rules that involve crossing situation, stand on vessel, give a vessel, as well as you can have a study of the um, rule which involves head-on courses. All right, so have a rule, uh, have a read through these rules, rule number 14, 15, 16, and 17, and uh, tell me uh, whether you have any other points to add to this or not. If I miss something, what else could the other vessels have done? 
and I look forward to your comments. Uh, I'm sure you have seen that I have put a half of the video for public only. And at this point of time, I want to announce that I will be releasing all my videos first for members only. Uh, I will put up additional videos for members only. Uh, I will also be joining you for live streams and live chats like I have been. So I'm uh, going to announce some more benefits for members only uh, because uh, you have uh, trusted me and you have taken on the um, trust and you have supporting this channel. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you with my next case study soon. Bye.